Okay, I'm in my comfort zone. I was doing just enough to get by. I was working on a job. They paid me just enough to keep me from quitting. And I worked just hard enough to keep from getting fired. How many know people like that? Blink your eyes if you understand what I'm talking about. I was parked. I knew I could do more. But when my mama died, it took something out of me. When I went through a divorce, it took something out of me. When, when my best friend died, it took something out of me. I parked. And somebody said that life is like an onion. You have to peel it one layer at a time. And sometimes you cry. Life's gonna happen to you when you have a dream. You're gonna get slapped around. And don't take it personal. Don't ask, why did this have to happen to me? Why not you? Who would you suggest? You wanna give us some names, some email addresses? And don't tell everybody, 80% don't care, and 20% glad it's you. It's called life. Suck it up and move on. Get over it. It happens to everybody. Here's the other thing is you look at your goals and look at your dreams. When you're going through some stuff, repeat out to me please. When things go wrong, don't go with them. Yes, write that down. When things go wrong, don't go with them. When you're working on a business deal, you're counting on some money. Someone said you will get the loan and it falls through. You have an event and the people that you thought would be there and support you, they don't come through. Or someone turns against you or you get ripped off. It's going to happen to you. Happened to me. Someone stole all my products. My database, over 180,000 names and addresses. It's not personal. It's going to happen to everybody. It does. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. Walt Disney had seven. He filed bankruptcy seven times and had two nervous breakdowns. It's called life. But I got a saying, when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. You've got the power in you to do that. You've got something special. You've got comeback power. Here's the other thing. Let us say together, it's possible. It's necessary. It's me. Yes, write that down. It's me. Take ownership for your life. Nobody can live your dream for you but you. Nobody's going to take care of your business like you. Stop coming up with excuses. Don't give yourself permission to continue to live a small life. You can't fit a big dream into a small life. Give yourself permission to go for it, to test yourself, to challenge yourself, to live full. I like the saying, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. The reason you're here is because there's something in you that says, I can do more. This just can't be it. There's something in you, there's a calling on your life. There's something in your heart that caused you to get dressed and, and spend the money to go to seminar after seminar and listen to message after message and speaker after speaker. Because there's something in you that tells you, this is not it for you. You have not peaked here. There's more in you that you're expressing. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind. What's in store for you if you challenge yourself, if you persist and persevere, if you take ownership for your life. George Bernard Shaw said the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they create them. Create what you want. You have the power in you to do the more than you can ever begin to imagine. To control your destiny, to make a difference in our children, to make a difference on the planet, to make an impact. Let us say together, it's me. And let us say together, it's hard. Say it like you know it, say it's hard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard. The people who have seen their retirements taken away from them by the corporations that they work for. 
They were within two or three years of retiring and they had it taken from them. The number one entrepreneurs in this country now are senior citizens. The number one employer, number two, McDonald's and Walmart. And there's nothing wrong with those jobs. I guarantee you those people did not have a plan to end up living their lives at the end of life with those types of jobs. And they didn't have a plan like you have and why you're investing in yourself not to. And it's hard. There are people making choices between purchasing prescription drugs or paying for gas or a mortgage note. It's hard when you're working on a job for 20 years, 30 years, give them some good years, and then they come in and tell you, we've downsized. In other ways, other words, you're fired. And then you have to start all over again. How many of you know it's hard? Raise your hands, please. It's hard. And it's not fair. One of the things I like about T. Hobb is he talks about work and investing in yourself. It's not fair when people are going up against that kind of stuff to tell them just think positive and be enthusiastic and everything will work out all right. Ain't that kind of party. It's hard. Life will put some knots on your head. I bought my first home for my mother. I was rushing, didn't know what I was doing, and I bought a home that had a lien against it. And they called me, Mr. Brown, yes, there's a lien against your property. We need $55,000 if you're going to stay there. Wait a minute, sir. I just bought this home. The guy told me there were no liens against it. I'm not the one that owe you the money. You should have checked that out, Mr. Brown. Come on. I called my attorney, we followed up. Yes, Les, there's a lien against the property. But he told me there were no liens. He lied, obviously. Oh my God. He told me he wanted to help me because he admired the fact that I was buying this home for my mother and that he was adopted and he, he identified with me. Les, he suck at you. He played you, man. So what, well, would they take payment arrangements? Can I, what about $5,000 a month? They want all the money, Les. They want all the money or you're gonna have to get out. The house is going up for sheriff's sale. Do you have it? No, I, I don't have them. Can they give me some time? Tell them to give me, give me three months, please. Give me three months. I, my mother's in her 70s, man. She has a bad heart. Don't do this to me. This is my dream. Don't do this, man. Please, t let me talk to them. Les, I'm talking to their attorney. They don't want to talk to you. I've got to talk to their attorneys. Do you have the money? No. Will they give me three months? No. What about two months? No, Les. They want the money in seven days. Oh, my God. Um, let me call you back. I'm not sure. And I walked the floors thinking, God, how could this happen to me? I've got to figure this out. Huh? I've got to figure this out. It seemed like the days are just ticking off, ticking off. Thursday, I had to call them and let them know they called me less. Do you have the money? No, I don't. Friday, you have to leave. The sheriff will be there. You'll have to leave, Les. They're gonna take my house. What about my down payment? You lost it, Les. You lost it. Okay. I gotta go, yes. I prayed, Lord, please. If you show me that you're real, if, if it's if you're really real, you think Paul worked for you, you have you haven't seen anything. Don't let me lose this house and watch what I'll do for you. I was trying to cut a deal. <laughs> Have you ever tried to cut a deal? <laughs> it's amazing how spiritual you get when you get in trouble, you know what I mean? When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was going to bed with the, with the Bible and the Holy Quran and science of mind and Joel Goldsmith, everything I could find. I was paying to Jesus, Yahweh, Melchizedek, everybody. I was calling on everybody. It's amazing. And, and there I was, walking the floor, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I had to go and wake my mother up. I got on my knees and I said, Mama, I said, I need you to wake up. She said, what's wrong, Leslie? I can, I can hear you walking back and forth. I'm not asleep, son. I said, there's something I need to tell you. She said, your eyes are red. Why are your eyes red? Because I feel so stupid now. Why? 
we got to move tomorrow. Why, Leslie? There's a lien against the property and they want $55,000 and I don't have it. And we're going to be set out tomorrow. We have to go back to Liberty City. So she said, it's okay. I don't like this house anyhow. I said, why? She said, because of my arthritic knees. It, helps, it hurts my knees when I go up the steps. I said, then why didn't you tell me? Because you were so happy. I just said it because you were happy. I'll live in a shack with you, boy. I love you. It's not the house. I love you. I love all my children. I said, thank you, mama. Thank you. And the next day, the next day when we were in the truck going back to Liberty City and we pulled down 68th Terrace, the neighbors came out and said, wow, Mamie, Mamie, y'all coming back? Are you back? Yes. What happened to the home your boy bought for you? Those boys you adopted. Leslie didn't do a title search. He made a mistake. And boy, I was, I was so humiliated. How many ever made a mistake that you were just humiliated? Raise your hands. I was devastated. I was taking the furniture off the truck and my mother came and I was crying. And she said, boy, I said, yes, ma'am. She said, hold your head up. I said, mama, I can't. She said, hold your head up. I said, why, look what I've done. She said, it's okay. It's okay, you are gonna make a lot of mistakes in life, young man. You're gonna fail your way to success. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Keep your head up and take that furniture back in the house. I said, yes, ma'am. And I learned something from that. If you ever go through something, hold your head up. If you ever make a mistake, hold your head up. If you ever do something that everything goes wrong, life catch you on the blind side hold your head up it's not over gerda said